Crafting systems are essential for many types of games, such as survivals and RPGs. And today we will create one that will be working with our inventory and storage system that we created last time. In the crafting system we can have many categories such as basic, weapons and armor and depending on the items that we have in our inventory we will be able to craft new items. And because we are again using scriptable objects for the recipes, you will be able to easily add as many recipes as you want, set their names, types and the input and output items. If you don't want to be making the inventory and storage system from scratch, you can also download the project in the description. As always, we'll begin by making some UI. To use these icons for the buttons, don't forget to go to the texture type and set it to sprite 2D and UI. If some of your UI elements are not looking as they should, which for me this panel, you can see these borders are not set up correctly, you can just select the sprite, go to sprite editor and manually change the borders of the sprite just like that. And don't forget to apply. And if you want to use some fancier text, you can select for example the button Text Mesh Pro and import TMP Essentials and the examples and extras. I have added some buttons, one of them is for the crafting, then for some skills and for some equipment, which we will be using later, and also this panel with the categories of the items that we can craft. To actually show all of the items that we can craft, I will also add the scroll view, and this will allow us to put as many recipes as we want, and the player will be able to scroll through them. I will delete this scroll bar because we don't need that and I also change the opacity on the scroll view and to the content I will add component content size fitter which will make it that the size of the content will be based on the number of recipes that we'll have here and just set the vertical fit to preferred size. Next we'll create a script for the item recipe scriptable object. So I will call it item recipe so. For the recipe, we'll need some name and two arrays. One will be for the input items and the second one for the output items. I will also create an enum, which will be containing all of the categories for the item recipes. And add a variable of type recipe type so that we know which type this recipe is. But because our crafting system is a bit more complicated, we don't only need to know the type of the item but also the count. So I will create custom class for that. So I made the class system that's serializable called it item type and count because it is obviously containing those two variables and made a constructor for it. And now we can make the input and output of type item type and count array. Now using the scripted objects we can easily create new recipes. I added some new items using the scripted objects such as bow, coins, helmet, iron and so on. I have also downloaded some icons from asset store from these two packs, so feel free to check them out. And now we can easily add the items to the recipes, so set the recipe type and add some inputs. And to actually show the recipes, we'll need to create some prefab for them. So under the content of the scroll view, I will create empty object, call it recipe. Under it, I will add a recipe item, which will contain just the image and text and also plus and equal icon. So we have the item under which I have just the image and text, then the plus icon which I made using two black squares and the equal icon which I made the same way. Now how do we make it that these UI elements are automatically put in some order? The easiest way is to select the recipe 
and add horizontal layout group. And now you can see that all of these elements are automatically aligned. One thing that I will change is size of the plus icon so that it is closer to the item. And now if we add more items, you can see that they are automatically getting aligned, which looks pretty nice. I will make individual prefabs. So one prefab will be the equal icon, another one the plus icon, another one the item. Then I will delete all of these prefabs from the recipe parent and recipe will be another prefab because we want to be able to spawn the recipe and then spawn as many items and plus signs as we want. We can make a script that will be on the recipe parent. I will just call it item recipe. Here we will need to have a reference for the recipe scriptable object and references for the prefabs that we have just made. So we have all of these variables and I added a void for updating UI of this recipe where we will first destroy all of its children and then instantiate new ones based on the input and output size of the script table object. On start of the update recipe UI void, we assign the new recipe script table object. Then we are going through all of the children of this object and destroying them. In the for loop, I'm going through all of the input items and just instantiating new ones. I'm setting sprite of the images and setting them to the script table object. From it, we need to get the input on the index of i, which is in the current for loop. Then we can get the item and icon of the item. Then we are setting the text to again the recipe script table object input on the index of i and to the count value. If this condition is met, it means that the input item is not the last one, which means that we want to spawn in the plus sign. After this for loop, we will obviously spawn the equal sign prefab and we will do pretty much the same thing as this for loop. It will be just for the output items. So the code for the item recipe should look like this. Now we can add this script to the recipe parent where we also have the horizontal layout group. Just for now, we can try calling the update recipe UI void on start. And we can just set it to the current recipe just to test it. Don't forget to set all of the prefabs. We can add the recipe prefab under the content, set some recipe and see if it works. I set the recipe to the coins recipe, which you can see here, and it is correctly showing the input and also the output items. Currently, there is no way for us to open the crafting inventory so I will jump to the inventory manager where we will also manage opening of the crafting system. So we have a boolean for is crafting opened and a game object variable for the crafting parent and on update we can just set it to active. Just like that and I will create public void which will trigger when we press the button to open the crafting menu. So we are setting the is crafting opened pool volume. Now we can go to Unity and just hook it up to the button. So inventory manager and we called it open and close crafting. Also in the inventory manager script, when we press tab, which means that we are closing the inventory, we probably also want to close the crafting. And now we can get to the more fun, but also complicated part. So I will create a script for the crafting manager. I will put it to the crafting parent and first we will make this category buttons work. To the crafting manager script I edit a variable for the selected recipe type and a public void which will be triggered 
when we press one of the buttons for the recipe categories and in the switch we are just setting the selected recipe type based on the string that will input when calling this void. So I will just select all of these buttons that I have here, click plus, put here the crafting object and select the void which I called select recipe type and to the string in the basic I will type basic on weapon I will type weapons and so on. I will create private void which will be for updating recipe UI and I will call it each time that we call the select recipe type so after the switch we can call it. We will need to create three variables one will be for the recipes that we want to be using in our crafting manager second one will be for the parent of all of the recipes and third one for the parent prefab. First, we need to destroy all children of the recipe parent. Then we can spawn as many recipes as we need. We are also checking if the recipe type is equal to the selected recipe type. If this is true, then we can spawn new recipe and assign its name. We are assigning the recipe name because the recipes might get shuffled so that later we can assign the correct item recipe scriptable object. Then I have another for loop where we are going through all of the children of the recipe parent, we are getting the recipe script, and here we need to assign the correct recipe scriptable object. So I'm going through all of the recipes, and if recipe name of this current recipe that we are going through in the for each loop is equal to the object that we are going in the for loop, then we know we have found the correct scriptable object, so we can assign it, and we can call the update recipe UI, which we have on the recipe script, and pass in the correct scriptable object. Don't forget to assign all of the variables of the crafting manager. By the way, the recipe parent is just the content under the scroll view. And to the recipes list, we can add all of the recipes that we want to be currently using. So you will just add all of them. By the way, you can lock the inspector to make this easier for you. So let's try it. So I can press step to open the inventory. I can open the crafting menu, but I can't click these buttons. This is because in other videos we have been adding the functionality to drop the weapons for which we have added this drop item panel. So just drop it over the crafting to make sure that it is in background. And also when I press the button, you can see there is another error, which is happening in the crafting manager in part where we are searching for the correct item recipe scriptable object. So when we find it, we obviously want to break from the loop. Make sure that all of your scriptable objects for the prefabs have different names. We can also delete the prefab for the recipe that we have under the content. And for some reason, under the content, we don't have the component for the vertical layout group. So just add it in and now we can try it. So when we start it, nothing is happening. But when you go to weapons, you can see only the recipes that I have set the type to weapons, which is the sword and the bow. When I go to armor, I have the helmet here and in basic I have the coins. So all of the recipes that I have added to the crafting are appearing here based on the category that I have selected. Just to make sure that it is updating even when we open it for the first time, we will go back to the crafting manager. We can create private void on enable. And here we can just set the selected recipe type to basic and call the update recipe UI void. Just like this. So even when we open it for the first time, we have selected the basic category. So like this, you can easily add new recipes using the scriptable objects and you can also add new items. In next part, we'll make it that when we click some of the items that we can craft, it will check all of the items in our inventory and if we have enough, of the ingredients for that item, it will add it to the inventory. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye. Thanks for watching this video till the end. 
If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.